see the application, right? Uh-huh. Okay. Great. So I've got, a, I've got an intuitive dashboard. Um, I've got a, uh, some widgets in here and pictures and all kinds of cool stuff. You'll notice that across the top um, I've got my, I, I can go into orders. Um, I've got a, a product tab. I can get a list of products. And I can go to accounts and other things. Um, if I resize my window, this, this, this application is built from a responsive design metaphor. So if I resize the window, and for example, let's, let's make the window a little bit smaller like I'm on a tablet, you'll notice that the menu has now gone away. You see that? Yes, I do. And it's, uh, now the menu is here on the pullout. We didn't write any extra code. This is part of the, a built-in template that we give you. Um, so it makes it pretty easy as a developer to do this stuff. Now, if I if I... I take my tab, if I take this window all the way down to effectively a smartphone size, right, you'll notice that it went to a stack column. I still got my menu like that. And if I go back to the dashboard, guess what? It renders nicely. Oh, right. So all of this is built with our responsive design template. All right? All right. So that, that's the concept, and, and we can drill into that if you got questions. What, um, what I want to do is I'm going to, you know, I've got a nice-looking product list here, um, but I really would like to know who supplies these products. So I don't know if you can see this little widget down here. It's kind of you a gray-colored circle. Yep. Mm -hmm. And I just put my mouse on it and it says, click here to enter feedback. So if I do that, I get a pop-up window, and I'm just going to basically say, hey, um, I'll, I'll put my initials just so because You'll know it's from me. Please, um, what I want to say, please show me who buys this product. Um, I'm assuming, you know, we should be able to have that information. So I'm going to push the send button. What, what actually happened there is this is, this is a, a capability built into the generated application. You didn't have to write it. it it's configurable. You can turn it on or off for each, you know, for users or groups of users. But what this actually did was it, 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 it took a screenshot, really it captured the HTML, um, and a bunch of heuristics about who was logged in, um, the size of the window, and information that the, in, in addition to that pop-up window. So it captured all of that and is shoving it into a back office application so that my development team can see exactly uh, what I was, was, was worried about. And maybe I'll also say, you know what, guys, um, also, oh, let me, uh, landmark, uh, yeah. also give me a list of suppliers. Um, and send. I didn't spell it too well, but we submitted some changes. All right. Make sense? Makes sense. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop sharing, and I'm going to ask, I'm going to pass the ball over to, uh, so, um, and also, Darren, just a little bit about me. So I've been in IT about 20 years and done the last 12 or so, lots of .NET SQL. So understand exactly where you're, where you're coming from. So let me uh, share my desktop. And, and so, again, so Mike Cho, he put in the embedded, the, the change request, which, how do you do change requests now for your users? Uh, we have a, uh, uh, a ticket system that's custom built, but it's not integrated in anything like this. But it lives in the SQL database and everything else, right? Right, right, correct. So you can easily take this and, and, and tie it in, because, like, we're living in our platform, we, you know, this is data, the system and database. So if you have a ticket system and that's how you want to do it, you can easily push this information into a ticketing system. But right now I have a, a developer view and I'm looking at saying, okay, look, I've got some requests in here. And if I go into the first one, right, so I can see there's no, no questions, right? I can see that person you're looking at, who did this. So Mike put in his initials. He actually didn't have to. He logged in as Clark, so theoretically it's Clark, not Mike. 
Um, this is some really cool stuff over here. So he's got their browser and browser versions. So if you're supporting people on their own devices, what have you, you don't know what they're reporting, you, you can see this information and write uh, so just a bunch of really good information that you would need to know for what you're doing. And it's too right. confusing. I like maybe it's a data issue. I can close this, see everything that's on the screen, and I can open it up again. And likewise, I can go into the other uh, change and I can say, okay, what was he looking for? Uh, got it. So I, I've seen the changes, and you know, all right, that's fine. Let me go ahead and do these. So just to uh, just note, it's 1136 now. So I'm a developer. I'm going to go in. This is Studio. So this is my visual development environment. And if I look at my data diagram, I'm going to see that there's no tie between products and suppliers right now. So I'm just going to go ahead and make a quick tie in between the two so I can do some data integrity and, and make show those. So the request was on this particular screen, which is where the products are, to show the supplier. So now if I've got the ID, I'm going to drag the ID. The first thing you can see is I drag the ID, but if it's not enough to put text, because I don't want an ID. So I'm going to add a style. Uh, so I'm adding this style. I know it's around within one of the available styles of my feed. So I've added that there. Now, what my user didn't think about was, do we have products tied with suppliers anywhere? How can I manage that? So as a developer, I'm like, okay, well, let me give them a way to do that. And again, using a kind of drag and drop, I can take that same supplier ID that I added to the product, drag it over. Again, it's smart enough it's to take drop down. Drop down is probably not a great UI element if there's hundreds of items. So I'm going to use an accelerator and change it to an autocomplete. Did a bunch of logic, magic in the background, it changed it to an autocomplete. So that, that was step one, the first request. The next request was add a way to manage suppliers. Um, I'm going to use the more accelerators that are in our platform. And if I simply take my table and drag and drop it, you'll see stars. It created a list in our, in our terminology, a list. And if I do this two more times, create a show and then edit page. When I look at what just happened, Use the field on my application credit screen that looks like just like everything else, pull the information from there. But I can still customize it, right? So nobody uses facts anymore, so I'm going to get rid of facts. And I can contact name is a good one because I've got company name, phone, contact name, and email. Yeah, that's great. So that's one new screen that didn't exist before. And I've got two other new screens. So when I look at the show, right, this is when I click in the supplier, see all the details. This is great. I can make it a little bit better. Um, we have an open source community called The Forge. Somebody created a Google Map component. I've traveled with salespeople. Maps are always helpful. Uh, so let me just do an integration to Google Maps and I put it here. Right? Um, now if you look at the top, I've got this big red X. This is something called True Change. It's keeping me honest, right? So it's looking at my platform, it won't let me deploy a broken application. So when I look, it says the valid expression must be set for address. Well, that makes a lot of sense. We can't have a map without an address. So let's go ahead and select address. That red X is going away and it's green. Um, one other thing just wasn't a requested change. But so the request was show supplier on product and give a way to manage suppliers. Okay. So if I'm going through a product view, I can see product and I can see what supplier they do. But once I've assigned a bunch, it probably is helpful to go to a supplier and see all the products that that supplier does. So while I'm in here making these changes, let me go ahead and make this one last one. And I'm going to drag and drop product and put it here. And um, great, I've got this information. And now I'm going to go ahead and click this one click publish button. And uh, just so you know, now it's 11.39. So it's been about two and a half minutes from the time I started with some explanation along the way of what I was doing to the time I clicked that one click publish button. The one click publish, this is, up to this point I've been working in a visual model within my class, within this development environment, right? Right. When I publish, you can see the stuff that's going on. The first thing it does is save it to a disk. Then we store versions, so we've got built-in version control. And uh, assuming we have time, I can get and show you that. Then this, this magic, right, where it generates Right. It generates the .NET code mini-SQL. Right. 
So it takes that visual model and generates the output code, and then you see it deploys it to the server. Now if I relaunch my application, when you deploy the IIS, every time you do that, it takes a second for it to cache. Um, da -da 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 -da. So as soon as it finishes loading the, the newly deployed application, you will uh, see what I've just done. And, and if you keep in mind, it wasn't just two little changes, right? I changed the data structure, added a new field onto the product list screen, at, modified the product edit screen, created three new screens, did new integration with Google Maps, and did an for details. So the first request was here on the product list. At, but I don't see any suppliers. So if I dig into it, I now have the supplier thing and just type or double click because we wanted a, 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 an autocomplete, right? So if I click into breweries, hit save, let's see if that user comes up. Okay, now my supplier is there. Right? So that makes sense. It still hasn't shown because there's no data. So I pick another one, show the autocomplete. Right? So general product, and let's just pick another one here. Just so we've got a little bit of data to go. Through. So we've done that. But notice up here at the top, I now have this whole new menu item. If you didn't see me create a menu, the system is smart enough to help me. Now, I can manually go and do lots of the things that I use the, the built-in accelerators for. But I went ahead and did that. So when I go into suppliers, I've got this screen. Uh, name, phone, contact name. Remember, so originally started with fax and no contact name. I got rid of fax and show contact name. I can click, I sort. You know, you can see all of that. But I didn't add this. It's got pagination, everything built in. If I go to general products, right, I now have my supplier with the map, with the products that were assigned. Right? And, and just so you can see, this really is live. If I go to Sam Bear, do general products, it's saved again, and I go back to my suppliers. You can get bears here too. And I can go in and edit my page. So just in two and a half minutes, I did probably eight to ten changes. And I, I will say my best days as a developer, if I could get the business to leave me alone, that's probably at least three days' worth of work that I just did. Yeah, I was going to say two, two and a half. But, yep. <laughs> you might be a better developer than I was. <laughs> no, I'm just All right, say me and me alone. <laughs> All right, so we got the map. We got the product list. I know you use the responsive template. Let's see if it works. Make this thing smaller. Yeah, no, it works. Uh, so it's stacked there you everything. Go. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm extremely impressed. Okay. And keep in mind, right, so it's, it's 11.45 now. Um, this is just the development side. There's the whole DevOps, the development, the deployment, management. Um, what is, <laughs> from, from here, time-wise, I just want to know where to, to go and show you next thing. 